So I'm headed up to Mount St. Helens now. Decided yesterday just to do the little Silver Lake walk because it was getting too late and it was really foggy. And just pulled off at a scenic viewpoint. Uh, you know, this is really, I've debated about videoing this. This is really one of those where you've just got to come and feel it and see it for yourself. Uh, the edge of the blast zone and de devastated 150,000 acres of private, state, and federal forests. And then over here, this is the first board here. The forest returns. This was a nine million dollar investment. Not until the first commercial thinning scheduled for the year 2010 will they begin to realize a financial return on the investment. Um, by the year 2026, the new forest will begin to be harvested and then planted again. The forest cycle continues. I mean, I just, you know, can't explain and put this into, into words, uh, what's going on here. But uh, kind of, you know, it's years later, 39 years later, still very chilling. And I just spoke with some locals who uh, were here at the time. Talked about three inches of ash four hours away covering everything on their property. Very interesting, what you can learn from locals. And here is beautiful Coldwater Lake. This is Linda with Serene and Simple Life heading up to Mount St. Helens. Only it's a very gray day and I'm not sure what I'm going to be able to see. So I'm going to just post a few extra pictures at the end. I did take you on a little hike. Not sure if I'm including this, that hike from yesterday um, at the visitor center when I first stopped by. If I'll be including that today or not but other than that I'm just going to show you the lake take a few pictures and head on down the road just following a path to beautiful sights I am at Coldwater Lake after a turbulent blast shattered the forest and an avalanche of rock filled the end of this stream valley a lake began to form. As the first plants sprouted in the barren gray landscape, this new lake had already transformed into a sparkling gem a bustling with life. So I'm going to go down to the lake, guys, and this is the Mount St. Helens tour. What I think I'm going to do is just put a lot of, or a few photographs at the end, like I always do, maybe a few more and not video so much because it's gray and I've already taken you down a lot of paths <laughs> in other videos. So hope you'll join me as we get started on this tour. I'm going to go to a couple learning and visiting centers and I think you will be very impressed.
So up, I guess they say 4,000 feet. And as you can see, we cannot see Mount St. Helens. It is fog covered. The lady inside the Johnson Ridge Observatory right over there told me that today has been the weirdest weather. Snowed this morning. They were able to see the mountain for about an hour. And here we are. <laughs> so I don't know if I'm going to wait around and see if she shows herself today. Beautiful landscape. America the beautiful for sure. I used my park pass today. The one you get for $80 a year when you're not quite that <laughs> 62. <laughs> I have another year. And I think I've paid for this three times over with all the parks that I've seen. You know, they're all $30 entrance fees. Well, this observatory is $8. So, just savings, savings, savings. And I was wondering about these stumps. They are the remains of 150 foot tall trees. And the blast power was 500 miles per hour. And this is what's left from ancient trees. going to tell you this also needs to be on your list. Um, just can't go through all of what I'm seeing and I don't think you probably want to watch it because it's really uh, being here and up close and personal experience. And I just went in here and watched a couple minute video. From the eruption theater, then you walk out into um, all the interesting history and the dynamics of this whole en entire experience. So I'm going to go around Path of Destruction, Unstoppable Torrents of Mud, Stories from Survivors. Now what do we do? Salvaging the forest. So much to see and learn here. It's 
fascinating and just much better than any history class I ever attended. So here I'm watching a logging tour, sawmill tour, and a newsprint mill tour. I mean, Soon, this I area feel like will be I'm just experiencing what I'd be watching in my living room at home, only I'm out here in the great outdoors, just learning. <laughs> it's just so awesome. You know, my little clips here does not begin to express the detail and everything that's going on here in this visitor center. And this is the sawmill tour. Oh my gosh, the things we take for granted. They said everything from popsicle sticks to furniture, showing us how this all happens. Oh, I hope you can get here and experience this for yourself. To determine the most profitable dimension. I'm still scratching the surface here of what there is to see and read and learn. This is fascinating. These little babies planted and grow up to be grandfathers. Just more videos, more to learn. The forest tour. Well, you can watch that. And it circles around to the other side. I'm in the discovery room now. How cute is this for the kids? Gotta love it. Makes me think of my grandkids. <laughs> Sitting there and having fun, and so much to read. I continue to say that this is about all the different trees. I mean, they're and about the animals, the forest. So you got a fire bear. And geology. One of my favorite things is reading about the different animals. Yeah, yeah. I was up close and personal with this guy. <laughs> now I know a little bit more about him. But they are plant eaters. They don't eat flesh. <laughs> this guy I would never like to encounter up close. And just so many fun things for, you know, to do here. You can press the little button and hear the guy, <laughs> hear the bobcat. Oh, this is just amazing. Beautiful board here. This is not for us nor for our children, but for our grandchildren. Frederick Weyerhauser, 1900 founder of Weyerhaeuser. Oh boy. You know, one of the volunteers here said you just can't come up here and take this in like in a half hour. This is hours and hours of studying. I'm a bit overwhelmed and I've learned a lot today. Swept down the North Fork Another to the fantastic this live display. Ash and pumice erupted from the new crater throughout the day, reaching a climax late in the afternoon. 
winds blew the ash northeast away from Johnston Ridge, where it fell over eastern Washington, Idaho, and Montana. And some very cool displays and interaction here. Place your hands to feel an earthquake. 50 miles away, 3,000 miles away. Oh my gosh, all kinds of very cool stuff. That's just a glimpse of what that display was. And when will it erupt? Of course, around the corner here is more. And I am just about packed full of information, but I'll tell you, it's been so much more interesting than reading a book <laughs> or listening to somebody teach it in history class. It was eerie. You couldn't hear a thing. These people escaped the lateral blast. Here's the history. About 350 years ago, the cone-shaped summit of Mount St. Helens was formed by a century-long eruption in the Dixie. This Lava massive Dumes summit Lava Dome was destroyed by St. the eruption. And another video. What will the volcano Oh my gosh. Be Technology. Hands-on at its best. So I just finished watching a 16-minute uh, big screen on the eruption and then destruction creating new opportunity. I was talking to the forest ranger inside and he said now this is about 60%. We're seeing about 60% uh, the base of the crater and pretty cool. The sun's coming out. So glad I waited around. It's just about 4.30, I'm going to hang out a little bit more and see if the clouds and the fog lifts anymore. It is now spattering little spits of snow. <laughs> oh goodness, reflect on the power of change. Look at that guys, 1979, 1985, and 2000. Wow, pondering the immensity of change. A mountain collapses, a superheated stone, wind roars across the land, wave upon wave of pumice and ashes erupt. All this in a few hours time. On such a scale, it challenges our comprehension. And with that, guys, this is one of those very impactful days. You cannot grasp the magnitude and the feeling, unless you come here yourself, you cannot grasp that in a 20 minute video. <laughs> so I'm on my way down. I don't think I'm gonna be seeing Mount St. Helens in person today, but I sure have enjoyed this uh, little travels, big travels actually from where I'm working. And I am going to Go on down to the observatory, and I wish you blessings in your day, joy in the journey, and I hope you enjoyed this. Subscribe, click the bell, and catch up with all the Travel Thursdays I've been doing through the end of September, and I started mid-June.